Hey, what's going on everyone? Do you know that if you live in the US right now, your ISP, that is your internet service provider, can sell some of the most private information that you've got without your consent and definitely without telling you that they're doing it? I'll talk about which data they're actually allowed to collect and sell in just a second. But first, I want to give you a little overview of what you're going to actually get out of this. So in this video, we're going to talk about how you can counteract some of the biggest privacy threats on the internet, including your ISP, but definitely not limited to your ISP, by using a virtual private network, or VPN. Along the way, you'll get an overview of how VPNs actually work, and I'll recommend a few VPN providers that I think are worth checking out. No shilling or affiliate links, I promise. By the end of the video, you'll have a basic checklist that you can use when taking a look at a new VPN provider, and you'll know you know, that you want to use one and, and hopefully uh, what's important. If you want to set up your own VPN, I've got another video for that, but even tech people should probably be using a public VPN provider uh, for the blend into the crowd advantage it gives you. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but for now, let's just jump right in. Um, quick note, there is sort of a table of contents in this video, so if you already know the basics of VPNs, um, then feel free to skip around using the links in the description. So here's a list of the things that your ISP can now legally collect and sell straight out of a dystopian novel. Uh, your social security number, your precise location, your financial information bought from credit bureaus to flush out your profile, uh, your interests based obviously on the websites you're visiting, your children's information, your mobile app usage history, uh, which things that you're actually worried about psychologically like divorce, money, infidelity, abuse, embarrassing health conditions, your email content, if you send it back and forth unencrypted, although thankfully all the large email providers no longer do this. Uh, obviously things like your porn tastes and things that you know aren't illegal or surreptitious, but uh, just you don't feel like sharing with the world. Uh, all that stuff and much more is the stuff that they can legally collect about you and then sell. So if you don't like that very much, then use a VPN. And even if you do trust your ISP, consider that this treasure trove of stored data is too juicy to stay safe on your ISP service forever, right? So even if they say, oh, we'll take good care of this, we'll protect it, these companies have shown themselves repeatedly to be unable to protect this kind of information. So someday, every bit of that data collected about you will be stolen. It is simply a matter of when. So you should have some kind of plan to mitigate that damage. And a VPN is a great way to do that. It's a big chunk of that mitigation strategy. Let's talk about what a VPN actually is. How does a VPN actually work and what kind of stuff does it get used for? So a VPN is a virtual private network, which is what you get when you have two networks separated by the big bad wild west that is the internet and you connect those networks together using an encrypted tunnel. VPNs were invented for the situation where you're, for example, a salesperson on the road, you want to access, let's say, a sales presentation that's stored on a company server back at your headquarters, a few thousand miles away. So you want those two networks to be able to talk to each other securely, as if they were a part of the same network, as if it were just like, I'm going to look at this local shared file. So the way you glue those networks together, sort of, is by using an encrypted tunnel and a bit of routing magic on either side. That encrypted tunnel makes sure that as your presentation gets sent across the internet to get from one network to the other network, it can't just be picked up by governments, criminals, or ISPs. Out on the internet, all of these interlopers just see encrypted traffic, basically unreadable, random-looking, garbage-looking stuff. So let's talk about a few privacy problems out on the internet and a few solutions that VPNs let us implement. When you visit a website that doesn't use SSL, or that's the thing that gives you the little uh, lock icon, it says HTTPS at the beginning usually. When you visit a website that doesn't have that, your ISP sees everything you do. Pages and content viewed, unencrypted searches and form data. It's like basically having someone literally looking over your shoulder and videotaping. So the situation's slightly better when you visit sites using HTTPS, which again means that little lock icon in your browser would be showing. In that case, your ISP or anyone sitting on the same airport or coffee shop Wi-Fi network as you can see which websites you're visiting, but they can't tell which specific pages or content you're viewing. Hitting a website 
from your regular home network is basically like going to someone's house and having a conversation with them face to face. When you connect to a VPN and tunnel all your traffic through it before hitting that same web server, it's like using a courier to deliver a message instead. The recipient never sees you, they only meet the courier that's delivering your message. In networking, this is called proxying, because you're proxying through the courier in the same way that you're proxying through a VPN. When you use a VPN, every server you connect to on the internet sees your traffic as coming from the IP of the VPN server you're using, not the IP that you actually have sitting at home, the one that your internet provider gave you. Your ISP, on the other hand, just sees a single outgoing connection to the VPN server. Inside that tunnel happens to be all of your traffic. Netflix, web browsing, midget porn, whatever. Let's talk about another problem. Uh, there's another annoying thing that ISPs regularly do. When they see that you're streaming content from Netflix or YouTube during peak hours, or downloading legal torrents or other P2P traffic, they often quickly cut down your bandwidth to keep you from using so much of the resources they're overcharging you for. The networking term for this is quality of service, or QoS, which is kind of ironic since it's usually used to reduce the quality of your service and boost quality of another service. And it really just means that your ISP dials down the priority of those Netflix or YouTube or peer-to-peer -peer traffic streams on their routers. So if you wanted to watch at 1080p at 60 frames a second, or you want to see the latest Arch Linux ISO so your friends can download it faster, well, too bad for you. The result is that your video stutters and downgrades to a lower quality stream on YouTube side. Uh, the largest ISPs in the U.S. have also already been caught red-handed, slowing down competitors' content and speeding up their own, so you can pretty much just ignore their promises that net neutrality isn't necessary. It's all moot now because net neutrality uh, has actually been... The, the protections that were put into law a few years ago have now been deconstructed again, so uh, you know, expect to get screwed here. The solution, using VPNs, is that when you're proxying through your VPN, that is, you're connected to it and tunneling all of your traffic through, your ISP can't see what you're watching, visiting, or doing. It's all just encrypted, unreadable, random-looking traffic. They can look at individual packets and see that you're connected to a VPN, but they can't look inside that tunnel. This means that their automated QoS, quality of service systems, won't notice that you're using Netflix and rob you of bandwidth. To them, it's all just going to a single host, right? You're not going to Netflix and YouTube and a few websites, you're just going to your VPN server. More than that, they can't see. So let's talk about some of the limitations of what a VPN can do. Despite occasional marketing claims to the contrary, a VPN can't totally protect your privacy and it certainly does not make you anonymous online. Tracking technologies like flash cookies, browser fingerprinting, various traffic correlation techniques, uh, those all still allow third-party advertisers to spy on some of your traffic and foil your attempts at anonymity. The only way around this is to use something purpose-built for that specific use case like Tor and the Tails Linux distribution. But that definitely doesn't mean that VPNs are useless. They're a huge, huge ally in this fight to keep your own privacy. Let's talk about a few general VPN usage tips. One of the most important things that you need to do, and certainly for protecting yourself from your ISP, the most important thing is that when you're using a VPN, force all of your traffic through the VPN. You must tunnel DNS through the VPN. The reason that you must tunnel DNS through the VPN is that if you're trying to hide that you're going to a website from your ISP, then it's useless if your traffic to that site is encrypted, but every single time you connect to it, you still make a DNS request to your ISP's DNS servers asking for, hey, can you please give me the IP address for secretsite.com? Well, then they know you're going there because you're requesting DNS for it, so you lose a lot of that privacy even though they can't inspect your traffic anymore, your non-DNS traffic. So. That's the rubric, one of the rubrics, which we'll talk about later for choosing a VPN provider, is that you absolutely need to have a VPN client that makes it very easy to force all of your traffic through the VPN. So let's talk about how to choose between VPN providers. There are a few, to me, really important questions uh, about this. What country is that company actually based in that you're buying VPN access from? Second, the history. What's the history of that company? Do they have any public history of ever 
cooperating with a government investigation, handing over user data, anything that's out in the open. Now, of course, this may be secretly happening. and there's, there's really no way for you to judge based on that. So just pick a provider that's in a country that has strong privacy laws, on a continent that has strong privacy laws. Check the company's history. Look at their terms of service. Do they resell user data under any circumstance? Do they do work with advertisers at all? Do they keep logs at all? Like someone deleting logs is much worse than someone just never keeping them in the first place, right? And I really just want to drive this fact home. Good VPNs are going to cost money. It's not going to be a lot, but it's going to be something. Free VPNs are actually worse than no VPN because they're actually forced to do shady things to make money to actually recoup the cost that they have to provide the VPN service. Uh, things like injecting ads, which are often end up being malicious, um, selling data about you, selling data about your browsing habits, um, actually reselling your connection to third parties. Uh, I highly recommend that one privacy site.net. Uh, they've got a, a couple amazing VPN reviews and articles specifically about choosing the best VPN for you. Uh, and they have a simple and an advanced VPN comparison chart, which is insanely useful. And that's actually you, uh, the thing I use to find my VPN. Currently I use Mulvad, M-U-L-L-V-A-D. Okay, so that is the basics of VPNs, what they are, what they were originally intended for, how you can use them basically as a hack to protect your privacy, and how to go about choosing them, things to watch out for. You now know all of this stuff. You should be using a VPN, period. For those of you interested in setting up your own VPN, I don't recommend that you use open, your own OpenVPN server because although it can help you overcome like regional blocking, like geo blocking or throttling on the ISP layer, it doesn't actually improve your privacy much to anyone that's listening further upstream because if you have a single server and you and maybe two of your friends actually use it as a VPN, as a proxy, then there's only two or three people coming out of that IP, presumably an Amazon IP block or some other VPS provider's IP block. And instead of you being one of thousands or tens of thousands of people coming out of that VPN IP, you're gonna be one of three, which means it's gonna be trivial to correlate all the traffic, um, even between a few different people, back to specific personalities and people. So uh, running your own VPN, there's a lot of great business reasons to do so, but it's uh, generally a poor choice for privacy. You want the safety of being one in thousands in a large crowd, all right? So just a final note for, for you technical people, I will uh, do a video on setting up your own OpenVPN install. Okay, so I hope that's been educational. I appreciate uh, subscribes and sharing of the video if you uh, know somebody that might benefit from hearing this. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll be happy to respond. Be safe out there. It's a crazy, crazy uh, internet, especially web, and it's about to get crazier. Stay safe out there. Peace.